I'm here with actor and singer Jay Vasune. How are hey, you? Hey, I'm good. I'm well. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being happy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, before we talk about Shadow Hunters, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about when you first decided you wanted to become an actor and what okay. steps you took. Well, it was when I was 10 years old mm -hmm. and I took like classes at the community theater. And I think around that time is when I realized that I could create a career out of that because I you know, would love movies and stuff, but I never understood that it was something someone could do right. until I was 10. And I was like, oh, I could do that. And I remember at our school, at our elementary school, um, different, it was like we had a professional day and then an actor came through who was a, an actor from Quebec who did the voice for the Aladdin film of the genie's voice, mm -hmm. but in the French version. So he came and he talked to us and he's done other stuff whatever. But it really kind of became clear to me that it was a, a career path. So I was like, oh, here's a cool way to do it. Yeah. That's not, you know, working in an office. And so, you know, I took classes with some friends at the community theater. And then when I walked on stage for the first time for our final project, I, I felt this, this like right place, right time feeling, this, mm -hmm. this heart opening kind of. And, and somewhat had like a vision of my future, but from there I decided um, that feeling, I'm gonna follow that feeling. And so I've been following it this whole time. So it just kind of grew from that and evolved and evolved and evolved. When you first started, did you want to specifically just be an actor and music came later or did yeah. you want to evolve? I wanted to do uh, acting first and always loved music. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was like about 15 that I really wanted to become a, a that until I was, like when I was 15, I wanted to be a singer. And I just didn't know who I was yet, you know? So I, it, so I, so I stayed with the acting path because I was also dancing. I was also playing guitar and piano and stuff. So acting seemed like the, the, the most, um, the one that made the most sense for me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I can do this. So, so I did, so I did everything I could, you know, plays in school, community theater, dance, MC, stuff like that. And, um, you know, finished high school, went to theater school after that. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, okay, this is school. You know, I'm learning what I want and it's great. And from there, when I graduated, I, I booked a job. Uh, uh, it was a nine month tour of Canada with The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Okay. And uh, another play called The Shape of a Girl, uh, which is a one woman show, but I was in it. And, and the line, the witch, and the wardrobe we did with only two actors, so me wow. and a girl, and we transformed into everything. That it, was, it was incredible. And so from there on, like all my dreams came true. Basically, I was working, in acting, I was making money, I was traveling, and it seemed like you know that was it. And uh, then I just continued, and you know I just I followed that feeling again. It was really that feeling that made me, because I knew that if I followed that feeling, it wasn't a specific goal and it was more of a general one that could attract more opportunity mm -hmm. and so I did and yeah the steps were you know meeting people taking classes I did I did it all really I did as much as I could yeah for free for a lot of free work mm -hmm. but met really great people that led into something else led into something else and then uh, yeah and then your first longer running gig was uh, on a show called Heartland right yeah Friends on Yes. Yeah, so that was actually that was my first television gig ever uh, before that, I had done some films. Mm -hmm. I did one for Freeform before. It was ABC Family back then. It was right. called Cyberbully. That was right. like my first film. Um, I did some Quebecois films, but yeah, my first TV thing wasn't just like a one line on episode. It was yeah, it, was, it awesome. was a recurring, which was yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it was two seasons. It started off as one episode, and then it, they just kept writing me in, and then mm -hmm. turned into a two season arc. And my character kind of like shook things up in the show. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then uh, you also were in a show called That's My DJ. That's right. Sam. That was another yes. long running gig. Long running gig, five years in the making. Uh, There's a really good friend of mine, D.W. Watterson, who is also a DJ, but she's a brilliant director and writer. She created that series. I was a fan of the first season, wasn't involved with it. Went to the screening and then through life, was kind of orbiting around D.W. and her crew and stuff. And then, um, you know, after our friendship, because we collaborated on parties and I used to draw the posters for a party she made in Toronto and then next thing I knew she offered me this part in season two 
and then she told me, and I'm writing season three for you, and it's this character, and she told me all of it, awesome. and I was just like, what? Because I was such a fan of it. Yeah. And actually, I'm a producer on the third season, the one I'm act, the, the one I'm the lead of, and that was my first producer credit ever, and kind of just happened because I was so involved in the producing of it yeah. without knowing really. Yeah. It, there's many producer aspects to it, but. Uh, I'm one of the associate producers, and she told me like, you know, you're a producer, right? So this is your credit. So I'm just like, wow. And my first lead role in the series, and yeah, it's been super. And now you're on Shadowhunters. That's right. So talk a little bit about your character and, and what his arc has been, and what you can tease about this final season. Okay. Yeah. So my character is a Sealy, which is essentially an elf, mm -hmm. um, mixed with angelic and demonic blood. So it creates those hybrid beings: mm -hmm. elves, mermaids, fairies, things like that. Um, so it's, he has an interesting story because he's in the books you discover that he's half elf well half fairy because his mom or his father I'm not sure which anymore um, was human and uh, that's kind of a spoiler thing actually <laughs> but uh, so anyway that's how he ended up in the silly court the, f the queen saw him as an asset she could use him to uh to do her different agendas and her different things like that. So anyway, she kept him in there. He's basically a prince of the fairies. She sends him to represent him in the council and things like that. So he's there and you're not sure. The fairies are very like, you don't know where they're gonna play. Mm -hmm. They're evil, but they're also not. And they live forever, so they have a wider perspective of just humanity. They see all the drama play out and they only get involved when they know it'll be beneficial for them, uh -huh. but also for the greater good of things, you know, so. It must be interesting to be able to play the good it's, and the bad. Yeah, it's so much of just fun. being strictly good or yeah, strictly bad. absolutely. No, it's been so fun because, you know, as Jade, I want to be part of the Scooby gang. Like, I want to fight evil <laughs> with everyone else, you yeah. know? And sometimes it wasn't the case, which is annoying, especially when the storyline kind of makes no sense where, one second I'm friends with them, the next I want to kill them, you know, it's kind of weird, but I... That's how it is in this world today, though. Yeah, true. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and even for an actor, we always have to make sense of mm -hmm. whatever's being told, because sometimes a line will be written not for the story, but mm -hmm. for another purpose. Right. And so it makes no sense, mm -hmm. and so you have to find a way to, you know, because there's not so much we can say right. and step over the writer's job mm -hmm. sometimes we really have to say something because it's really counter story other times it slips other times we just have to say what we have to say but um, so I tried to find reasons as to why that would make sense mm -hmm. why did why do I want to kill Clary all of a sudden why am I not speaking to them why am I pretending like I don't know them when we spent this whole thing together last season you know things like that yeah. any reasons for that but it's really fun really fun yeah. to be able to do that and then this next season it's going to be a lot of Melion deciding does he want to be a slave to the queen and 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 be unhappy or you know defy defy her mm -hmm. for his relationships and for what he th believes is good mm -hmm. and what he should do mm -hmm. and uh, so it's going to be sort of playing with that for the final fight what was the uh, best part of working on the show? It's been my friends on yeah. the show, meeting everybody, and having such a close bond mm -hmm. beyond the set, way beyond the set. Yeah, that's yeah. important. It also uh, leads to chemistry yes. on, on set. Definitely. With your characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and now we get to travel together and we live a lot of things together. So I don't know. It's been uh, that's been the best part, and the second best part has been the fandom. Yeah. Yeah, really, truly. Shadowhunters fans are very uh, passionate. They're so passionate, so loyal. They're, you know, they they embrace us into their fandom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It yeah. was theirs. Yeah, it's, it's theirs not ours first, at all. Yeah. It's really much theirs. <laughs> no, you're and, stay in your lane, right, Jay? Stay I, no, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's so true. Like that story yeah. existed. They had their lore. They had their full fandom way yeah. before we existed. And then they embraced us. You know, especially me, who my character isn't liked in the books at all. She's traitor and a bad annoying dude you know so well that's a testament to you as an actor though thank you that's nice yes um it's been very awesome and so the connection with the fans and the connection with my friends on the show yeah. has been the best parts that's great um what scenes uh 
uh, without giving anything away for yeah. this season specifically, have stood out for you? Uh, either have been the most fun to film, the hardest to film. Cool. Talk for this new season. season, yeah? It could be for the new season. It could be for a previous season. I just don't want you to give anything right, away. Right, right. <laughs> My favorite season. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite ones are when everybody's there. Yeah. It's so fun when everyone's there. Mm -hmm. It's There's such a um, connection between everybody that's weird because it's overlapped it's, it's everybody you know I see my friends around me but I also yeah. we're like layered with a character so there's right. all these different dynamics going on it's super fun and on set it's just so much fun when everybody's there yeah. and so we had a lot of scenes like that this season and then things that people haven't seen yet because you know it's the final fight like everybody shows up everybody's yeah. there present so it's make it even more exciting so exciting so fun yeah makes the days so much fun like um, and some of this best stuff it's cool because this next few episodes is going to be like kind of an echo of previous episodes so like cool little you know duos that you liked before are going to come back there's going to be sort of references from the past or winking at certain things that so have it's happened. kind of like a love story to the fans absolutely wrapping up. yeah yeah yeah. it's definitely like wrapping it up in a beautiful way mm -hmm. because everything has to come full circle the storylines that were kind of there for no reason mm -hmm. or pushed aside and what's important is so it's really of, tightly written and tightly yes because they had no choice yeah, finally to do it over, yeah. and I've just been like well it took like so long TikTok, yeah. like what took so long <laughs> these stories must have they should have happened a long time ago yeah. I don't know why so much time was wasted but that's another conversation yeah. <laughs> not on camera right <laughs> so now that the show is wrapped you're really focusing a lot on your music and you're going to be releasing stuff later this year correct? yes I'm releasing in June music. Yeah, June, sure. releasing my first single, mm -hmm. the EP or album, I, mean, I think it's going to be an EP to start, it's going to be called Love Letter to a Fandom, which is the fandom, the Shadowhunters fandom, and also my own, mm -hmm. because, you know, a lot of the fans have known me from previous projects, like Heartland, and, right. you know, the ABC Family film I did, the Cyberbully from before, so I want to give back, you know, because they've changed my life, mm -hmm. now I can travel the world to see them, and just incredible things that I'm experiencing, so, um, you know, I've always wanted to do music, and now it makes sense to me how I can do it, and it's the right time to do it. And if I don't do it now, I'm going to regret it forever. So it's, this is really the time. And uh, the songs talk about, you know, experiences that I've had on tour, and uh, you know, things that I, I think everybody can relate to in a way because mm -hmm. it's very universal things like heartbreak and you know, bittersweet and life and friends and Instagram and things like yeah, that. So absolutely. yeah, is there a genre it's going to fit into, or are yeah. you trying to? make it cross it's kind of cross everything but mm -hmm. it's definitely pop music mm -hmm. which is what I love yeah. but uh, pop music represents there. everything right yeah, so, absolutely. so I have a tropical house in there I have trap music hip hop uh, electronic it's all kind of mixed there um, the first song is a tropical house song it's like a summer tropical sounding nice like, yeah that's gonna be awesome I'm so excited How, yeah I was just gonna add it must be exciting yeah, to, you don't even under and also a vulnerability that you yeah. don't necessarily get to show sometimes if you're acting yeah true this is your music you've written it yeah and so what's that besides exciting it's what so is it? fantastic yeah, it's, yeah you're right it's a little vulnerable for sure when I think about okay I'll have to be like singing this stuff and I wrote them and they mean different things for different people when they hear it and they mean specific things for me but right. Is there a little uh, nervousness because when you were you're doing acting projects, you're bringing to life somebody else's words. Yeah. Now you're bringing your own yeah. words to life and, and, and putting your emotion behind that. Right. That's got to be a scary, probably scarier. A little bit. Acting. A yeah. little bit, especially when, but not anymore. It's because I'm so in it now that I just can't wait to, to do it, you know? And because, yeah. it's, it, because it's my words, it's, it's even less nerve-wracking almost because I know what I'm saying. Yeah. And... It's so freeing, actually, because I'm not saying someone else's words. It's, it's like, it's interesting because working for a network, there's a lot of filters between the story, the agenda that the network has, mm -hmm. what they want to incept into the population, what messages they want to give out there, right, right. and then the lines are edited like a million times by a million different people mm -hmm. and so it becomes kind of rigid and totally not, not authentic yeah and when I read the script I'm often like nobody speaks that way right 
nobody says that. Nobody would repeat that here. Nobody would say this name here. We would just say almost no words right. when we communicate. We know what we're talking about. We don't have to re-say what just happened five seconds ago, you know? Right, right. And the, the fans don't need that either. They the see. fans absolutely don't need that. And the fans are intelligent. Yeah. They're not stupid children, which I think certain people don't understand. Mm -hmm. They think they're dumb. Yeah. And it's kind of upsetting, actually. It's very upsetting and it's annoying. And uh, in addition to your new music, you're also an advocate for uh, the LGBT yes, absolutely. community. What, what has that been like for you? Being able to use your platform, uh, being able to get your message out, and, yeah. and since you have so many fans yeah. throughout the world of, I would assume, varying degree uh, all ages, of the place, yes. uh, sexuality, yes, genders. Yes, of all and, genders, sexuality. Yeah. Um, what is that like for you to be able to use that platform? It's so good and so important, and my whole message is, is it doesn't matter what the label is, straight or gay or bi or multi anything mm -hmm. we're human and we're all different and we're here for a reason in our authenticity and our, in our uniqueness and that's the whole point yeah that's the whole point yeah it's, it's almost it's almost sad that in this day and age it's obviously better yeah. than it had been in the past even when i was growing up and things have been become more accepted and acceptable yeah but there's still a long way to go so yeah you know it's yeah people should just be people absolutely people matter. are people and it, it doesn't matter what or how it, it expresses, you know what I mean? Obviously, don't hurt other people. That's, right, right, right. That's the basis. I just mean like sexuality. No, absolutely. Wise, like it's just absolutely, and and, and that's why. That's... And, and and to me, I'm already I'm, I'm beyond. Like the conversation is like, okay, it's been had. Now let's move on, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. You know, race and all that. It's in the past. Like, like, why are we yeah. even still talking about that? Right. It's so ridiculous and behind. It is. And so to spend time staying talking about, like, to continue that fight, sort of, is a waste of time. I think. I think it's time to just know, mm -hmm. you know, that love is what's up right. and sort of move on from there, you know? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So, what else would you like to do uh, besides your music now that you're, is there a certain project or a genre of the, you know, entertainment industry in terms yeah. of film or, right. or drama or comedy? Yeah, or, uh, it's funny because I want absolutely my whole life to become mainly music. However, I will always act and I'm excited to do feature films. I love that. I love doing something for a little while and then moving on. Instead of being locked down. Yeah. Um, you know, TV series, there's so many and most of it isn't interesting to me. Yeah. So it has to be something that really sparks passion in me and sort of a message I want to be involved with. Yeah. And an agenda that, you know, it's so interesting because I see through corporation agendas like I, I I'm really aware of it and I love researching that stuff and and when I read it it's so clear to me what's going on when I read scripts right and what they're why they're mentioning certain things or yeah. how it's mentioned so most of the time I just don't, don't want to be part of stuff um, do you have a desire to write your own or yeah not write I mean, your you own know films yeah, but like yes absolutely there is creative. there is no satisfaction like creating your own content mm -hmm. Like when I did That's My DJ, mm -hmm. no matter how big Shadowhunters has been, mm -hmm. the satisfaction that comes from, from That's My DJ evolving and growing and tra traveling the world with it, and that is incomparable in terms of satisfaction and pride of, wow, right. look what we just made and look how far it's come. Yeah. It's not like someone that just, you know, hires you and uh, you say their words and then they kind of treat you like shit, you know? Right. So it's really... It's different. And also there's no editing. It's like, right. you say what you say because you want to say it. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you can't say this word because it doesn't work in our quota of love. You know what I mean? It's right. so it's different. There's a flow, there's yeah, an yeah. authenticity, there's a sort of passion. So yeah, you know, and I've been, I've been fortunate because recently I've, I've worked with really amazing, talented, brilliant friends of mine who have created their own shows. Mm -hmm. They wrote me parts, things like that. So I want to do more of that. You know, and there are really great people out there as well, like producers that are in the, you know, in the mainstream as yeah. well. So I want to work with those people. And, and I'm hoping that, you know, doing the music will sort of transition into where people will approach me to be in their acting projects. Um, but with some music in there, maybe, yeah, you know, like... Yeah, cool. And there's also so many platforms. There now. is. There's, there's tons of stuff. I mean, YouTube's been around now for yeah. a while, but, you know streaming platforms you can do your own web series exactly there is like the sky's the limit it really days. is it's so exciting i yeah. would assume to be you know 
an actor in this day and age, and a musician, and yeah. all the Yeah, just an life. artist. Yeah, 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 it's so exciting. There's yeah. tons of stuff. And my, my favorite cool. thing is collaborating with, with people. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, everybody has something to bring, and bring, like joining our forces together, it creates something greater and better. You know, there is no... It's like we're moving away from the old mentality of the pyramid and the, yeah. like I'm superior because I'm higher up on the list and so I'm gonna treat you this way. In that, a perfect world, that, that's how it's gonna be. Yeah, but that doesn't go far. Yeah. I mean, it, it goes far for a little bit, but it doesn't last. Like, that is unsustainable. Mm-hmm. And what is sustainable is collaboration right. and equal um, amount of back and forth, giving and taking, and sort of spreading that and and everybody thriving together. You know, succeeding together. Absolutely. There is no one winner, and I think like our generation are starting to understand that. And I'm seeing a lot more people collaborate together, create their own stuff, mm-hmm. and you know, and they succeed, man. They succeed. Yeah, they become absolutely. mainstream shows after. Yeah. You know, so all that stuff. So yeah. I'm well, open that's to the cool that. thing about things like uh, networks like Netflix. They pick up shows that yes. have been discarded or, or do their own. Yeah. It's amazing, and they reach a lot more. People. Yeah, Netflix are cool for that. I would I would love to do a Netflix original. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to Thank you so much for happy this. birthday. Oh my god! Cake! <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you, I so appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Lovely chocolate. Have a great day. You too. And thanks for, thanks for coming I'm out. I'm glad. Thanks for tuning in.